F and the boy of the sands and the girl of the sea part one. It appeared to be a night like any other during his endless term. The cool breeze caresses him, as gentle as the kisses his love once gave him from a time long past. The sky was illuminated by the moon, as big as the sun, with endless stars kindred to it. The waters were as clear as they had been ever since the beginning of existence, with barely any ripples, even as he made his strokes near the water's surface. The gentle moonlight made those peaceful waters reflect its magnificence, and the light stars upon those waters in perfect balance. The ferryman was tall and proud as ever, dutifully reviewing all the moments in space and time to determine his next destination. From the conception of the most primordial, most basic elements to the collapse of the boundless cosmos, every beginning, every end, and everything in between past, present, and future, reviewing eons upon eons of the passage of time, back and forth, his all-seeing eyes traversed each moment in all planes of existence to find who would be his next passenger and where it was that he would await them. After a brief moment, he finished ahead of schedule. With time to spare, he found himself admiring the beauty of the night when suddenly, a small floating figure caught his attention. A luminous glow emanated from the figure's beautiful silver hair, gracefully reflecting the light of stars on each strand. This was what made this one fateful night, unlike any other, for nothing makes it to the surface of that ocean. Unlike any other ocean, it is boundless and encompasses all, even the skies above it. Its depths are only truly determined by the very nature of all the souls within it. No one, not even the ferryman, truly knows how deep it goes. For no one can ever truly know the depths of any soul, not even the one it belongs to. The ocean possesses an all-embracing pull toward its depths. Strong as the pull is, no matter how far a soul wanders into its depths, nothing, not even the most basic units of existence, ever made it to its center. It is harsh and unforgiving, but it is also nourishing and life-giving. For it is in those waters that all begins and all is renewed. It is ever-changing, but its very essence and purpose have remained constant ever since. Back on the surface of those waters, the ferryman appeared to have stumbled upon a curious little creature. He smiled when he looked upon her, slumbering endlessly and floating aimlessly for an unknown time along that gentle, clear, and moonlit ocean. He admired her beauty and her graceful little lips resting on her face. Without any hesitation, he pulled her into his boat. He cleaned her up. He fixed any pains that were pestering her. He made her presentable and stole away one good thing and all the bad things. Anything floating on those waters for a time would surely be lonely and very afraid, most especially during the night. The instant he stole away all the bad things, a moment of madness befell him. Nothing a good ferryman can't handle. Once she was all prim and proper, he sat her down in a comfortable enough position on his boat. He put the utmost care into this, as he prides himself in his services. He produced a soft cushion chair in her position and made the air around her more gentle. As a personal finishing touch, he removed his mask and kissed her on the forehead, like he always does with any other soul that gets on his boat. Once all his intricacies were settled, he put his mask back on and carried on to his destination. It was at that moment that she opened her eyes and asked the ferryman, where am I? She said. Upon hearing her voice, he smiled without looking at her, a tear fell, oddly, off one of the eyes of his face behind his mask. He said nothing at first. He collected himself and collected his thoughts. Finally, he uttered these words to the curious little creature, don't you worry, my dear. We're on our way to a better place. All you have to know, my dear, is that from now on it's all going to be okay. She kept asking questions along the way, and he tried to answer all of them the best way he could. She asked things like, who am I? Why am I here? Who are you? And what exactly is the ocean of souls? He answered all of them as honestly as he could, though he wasn't looking her way. His face was already hidden behind his mask, and he thought it was unnecessary anyway. 
They talked for a long time, mostly questions, upon questions, upon questions. Some were more frustrating than others. He wasn't able to answer all of them, of course. Wise as he was, he admits he does not have all the answers. To the very difficult questions, he merely stated the unknown unfolds in its way, my dear, in more ways than simply getting the answers. Two, some degree, the curious little creature understood, though this made her ask even more questions. It did make for good conversation to pass the time. After quite a while, he thought he heard something familiar. This wasn't the voice of the curious little creature. The sweet voice of his love, perhaps. Because of this, the ferryman finally looked her way again. He saw his passenger and found that she was smiling at him. At that moment, tears fell in both his eyes. After a long, long time. For some reason, looking at her made him remember the time he once shared in a place where he was together with the flowers he once had when he was alive. He remembered those little moments with his flowers to be the most beautiful moments of his existence. Once he was done having recollections of the life he once had, he thanked that curious little creature for making him smile. Oh my dear, your smile brings me joy behind this mask, and for that, you have my gratitude. He uttered. She then said, what are you talking about? You are already good company. I'm learning a lot with our little talks too, though I was wondering when you are finally going to look at me. Though I would appreciate you removing your mask, it must have something to do with who you are. So I won't pester you for it. It does seem a bit odd to be talking to you without getting a good look at you, but I do appreciate you finally looking my way. I see, well, you're very interesting in your own right, my dear. Well then, let's get going, shall we? The ferryman replied. With that, they both smiled at each other. Along the way, they continued to talk to one another and even played some games along the way. They played all sorts of games and puzzles and even tried to challenge one another with riddles. All the while, she tried to convince him to remove his mask as a reward. The ferryman accepted, but she wasn't successful in getting him to remove it. It was a beautiful and clear moonlit night, and they did a good job of keeping each other company. With that, the boat went on by itself, expecting that the ferryman would get lazy at some point. The boat then continued by itself, having a new destination in mind.